Hi friends and my dear students a very warm welcome to all of you for my session today and today do you know what we are going to start yes we are going to start the very first chapter of your second year syllabus that is the solid state okay friends are you ready yes friends we all know that we are surrounded by matter everywhere right and whatever we come across should fall into these three states of matter that is solid liquid or gas right yes look at the rocky mountains huge glaciers logs of wood iron pillars and the list goes on and on all are solids right and the water bodies like rivers lakes etc represent the liquid state and of course the air that surrounds us is nothing but a mixture of gases we already know that yes friends if you have observed all these three states of matter carefully don't you think solids are more common than liquids or gases yes take a look at the periodic table you can see for yourself only two elements are in the liquid state 11 exist as gases whereas the rest of the entire lot are solids isn't it okay friends we know that any given substance can exist either in the form of a solid liquid or a gas isn't it for example the most common substance h2o we know it can exist either as solid ice or liquid water or steam that is a gaseous state isn't it therefore whether a substance can exist as a solid or a liquid or a gas in fact depends on the net effect of two opposing factors what are they do you know number 1 interparticle forces of attraction and number 2 thermal energy okay now what are these interparticle forces of attraction do you want to know yes as the name itself suggests interparticle forces of attraction are nothing but forces of attraction that exist between the constituent particles now what are these constituent particles yes these constituent particles can either be ions or atoms or sometimes even molecules also in fact these particles constitute either the solid or the liquid or the gaseous state of matter okay now coming back to the interparticle forces of attraction what are they doing here yes these forces of attraction hold such constituent particles together by keeping them closer to one another okay guys but what about this thermal energy i said it is the opposing factor mind you yes thermal energy is nothing but the energy possessed by these constituent particles due to temperature in other words we can say like this my dear friends it is a measure of temperature therefore at high temperature obviously thermal energy also will be high isn't it but friends we also know that kinetic energy is directly proportional to temperature keep this also in mind now at high temperature of course thermal energy also will be high but at the same time kinetic energy also will be more because of this these constituent particles tend to move away from each other therefore friends we can say like this interparticle forces of attraction keep the constituent particles close to one another whereas thermal energy keep the same particles away from each other okay okay friends when interparticle forces of attraction are weak but the thermal effects are quite predominant then the substance is said to exist in the gaseous state and we know very well that in gases the molecules are quite far apart and they keep moving randomly in different directions with different kinetic energies you know that just recall yeah but if the interparticle forces of attraction are slightly more than the thermal energy then the substance is said to exist in the liquid state 
okay but look here in the liquid also the particles are moving freely but not as much as in the case of the gaseous state okay so friends in general we can say when a substance can move freely from one place to another we can call such a substance as a fluid isn't it therefore here since the molecules of the gases and liquids are able to flow easily from one place to another we can call the gases and liquids as fluids isn't it and such a property is in fact called as fluidity okay on the other hand when thermal energy is less but interparticle forces of attraction are so strong that these constituent particles come closer to one another in fact cling to one another and occupy fixed positions in space therefore friends under such conditions a substance will exist in the solid state isn't it so here as the particles are fixed in their positions they are unable to move freely but however they can oscillate or they can vibrate about their mean positions hence solids are rigid in nature okay so friends now when we compare solids liquids and gases liquids and gases can be compressed because they are fluid in nature but look at the solids they cannot be compressed why because we know they are rigid in nature therefore friends due to such an unique property called rigidity solids are highly incompressible and hence they occupy a definite volume and they have a definite shape okay so my dear friends in this chapter we are going to primarily deal with different types of solids their properties and the various factors that influence their properties okay fine in fact friends the properties of solids depend on three important factors they are the nature of constituent particles that is i told you already these particles can either be ions or atoms or even molecules like uh, polar molecules or non polar molecules it can be anything okay the second factor is the arrangement of these constituent particles okay that is how exactly these particles are arranged in three dimensional space definitely matters a lot and the third important factor is the binding forces there is nothing but the interparticle forces of attraction that operate between these constituent particles okay so friends it's quite interesting to note that different arrangements of such constituent particles result in several types of structures which in turn determine the properties of the solids okay so if we have a thorough understanding of structure property relationship it is possible to discover new solid materials of desired properties for example you must have heard about carbon nanotubes isn't it they are tougher than steel lighter than aluminum and they have more electrical conductivity than copper other materials include like um, superconductors and uh, biodegradable polymers used for packaging and have you heard about bio compliant solids in fact they are used in surgical implants so friends this chapter is very important from the perspective of future technology and of course from the point of your exams as well yes friends then i hope you have enjoyed the session thoroughly with me and keep waiting i'll get some more fascinating topics lined up in this chapter so friends until we catch up in the next video take care bye bye